Have you heard of the touch buttons on the ESP32? They're pretty awesome. They basically can detect a change in capacitance and trigger something to happen. In this lesson, I'm going to tell you how to use those touch pins to trigger an interrupt service routine, which will allow you to write code to be super responsive to these touch pins. We're going to go line by line through the code. I'll show you some of the differences if you're using just an ESP32 versus using an ESP32 S2 and S3. And there's this one semi-confusing part about using the touch attach interrupt function that I will make sure to cover. Let's go ahead and do this. Now, if you've never used these touch buttons before, I highly recommend checking out the link in the description after you watch this video. We have another video that goes in depth about using these touch buttons. And we also have a fantastic article at our website that we will link to below that goes in detail on everything I'm about to tell you and way more. Thanks to Jason, one of our technical writers for writing that. Okay. So here's the basic idea with these touch buttons. Depending on the type of ESP32 you have, there's either 10 or 14 of these available. And all you do is you designate which one you want to act as a touch button. And then you can attach a wire to that pin or whatever you want to that pin. And it will be able to detect changes in capacitance at that junction, you know, so either directly at the pin or whatever you might have attached to that pin. I think this is pretty cool because you don't actually need a button to have button functionality. Now we can read the capacitance change at that pin, but what we're interested in doing is actually attaching an interrupt to that pin so that when the capacitance changes in a certain way, it will trigger a function for us, a callback function or our interrupt service routine. So now that we've kind of covered the overview here, let's jump into some notes here I have about this sketch we're gonna write. So here we are in the Arduino IDE, and I got a couple notes I wanna talk about before we start writing this code. Okay, so basically I've just lined out the stuff we need to do. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is designate which pin is gonna act as the touch pin. Like I mentioned, link in description, you can find out all the details about you know which pins are the right ones for your board. So first we'll do that. Then what we're gonna do is create this threshold value. So what threshold value do you wanna set? Well. It depends. Do you want your interrupt to fire if there's just the slightest touch at that touch pin? Or do you want a huge capacitance change at that touch pin? Like that's basically what is gonna determine your threshold. But the threshold needs to be worked out for your specific application. And the way you work it out is by using this touch read function. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually gonna open up a separate sketch and we're gonna read from this touch pin using this touch read function. And I'm just gonna give you an idea of what these thresholds look like. Okay, so what I've done is written a sketch and this is for an ESP32 S3. I'm actually using the Arduino Nano ESP32. and I've designated a touch pin, which is A2. Then in setup, I set that touch pin as a GPIO mode input, and that's what sets it as a touch pin. So the microcontroller knows like, oh, hey, okay, they're gonna be you know, reading capacitance changes on this pin. All right, then I start serial communication, and then all I'm doing in the loop is I'm just printing out the return value from the touch read function. So touch read is gonna look at this pin, and it is gonna spit back a value. And the value is gonna be from zero to some big number. And the size of the number it returns is gonna be based on whether it's an ESP32 or an ESP32 S2, S3. So there's different models of ESP32s. Again, you can look at the link in the description for all those details. I won't cover it again here. But the thing I wanna drive home here though is that this returns a range of values. So the reason you need to get an idea of what touch read is returning is because it's gonna be slightly different for every application that you're using. You know, it's gonna depend on like what all you have your ESP32 connected with, like what else might be interacting with, with the circuit and that type of thing. Temperature can change, like all types of things can change what these values will look like. But just to give you an idea, so right now it's reading 35,000 on the serial monitor window. I'm not even, you know, I'm like hardly touching the thing, right? Yeah, so see, notice that when I was just touching it right here, it goes up to 35,000. When I'm not touching it, it goes down to like 30,000. Okay, now if I 
touch the end of it, it goes up to, let's see, about 40,000. But then if I hold it like this, you know, it's showing, wow, it's going all the way to 176,000, okay? So there's this huge range of values it's gonna return. Now, the range of values your ESP32 returns will be different if you're using an ESP32, just like your standard off-the-shelf ESP32, as opposed to an S2 or S3 model. So you gotta be privy to what that value is. So what we've established for this specific circuit is that when we're not interacting with that, it's around 30,000. And then when we're going nuts and like really holding it, it's up to a hundred and uh, like 88,000, let's see. Or let's just call it a, let's call it 190,000. All right, so the lowest is around 30, the highest around 180. All right, so we're gonna talk more about this threshold value in a moment, but let's move on now. All right, so the next thing we'll wanna do is create a callback function for the interrupt that we create. So if you're not familiar with interrupts, basically what they allow you to do is get your microcontroller to instantly respond to something, even if your microcontroller is doing something else. So let's say your microcontroller is like reading some sensors and doing some calculation. Well, if you specify something that's gonna be an interrupt and that interrupt gets triggered, then the callback function that you associate with that interrupt is going to immediately take precedence and it's gonna execute. And then the program will go back to where it was. So interrupts are like, if you've ever been to a theme park, they got like the fast pass, you know, there's like this huge line of people waiting in line. And then you walk up with your fast pass and you're like, hi, I'd like to run in the front seat. You know, and everybody else is like, kind of look. Anyway, that's kind of what they like these interrupt service routines are. If you're not familiar with them, I got to tell you, they're totally awesome. Anyway, okay. So we'll want to create this interrupt service routine. Then in setup, we actually have to take that function we're going to create right here, that interrupt service routine function, we're going to attach it to that touch pin. And we're going to set a threshold as well. And then to demonstrate this down in the loop, we'll just check if that interrupt actually fired. Okay. So I know this seems a little like esoteric. I mean, we don't have any, any actual code here, right? So let me write some code out and then we'll talk about it again. A little repetition never hurts, right? So let's go ahead. I'll code this up and then we'll talk. Okay, so now I've got some code here. Let's talk through it. So the first thing is I said, hey, touch pin, I'm setting it as pin A2. So on my Arduino Nano ESP32 at pin A2, all I've done is attach a jumper wire. And I've set my threshold value at 2,500. If you're wondering what this whole touch value T thing is, check out that other video I've been talking about too many times in the description. It'll talk all about that. Then I've created a Boolean variable called touch detected and I set it equal to false. This is gonna be our flag variable that we use to determine whether or not our interrupt service routine actually fired or not. Then the next thing I've done is create my interrupt service routine. So this is a callback function. This function is going to get called when our interrupt is triggered. So I've named it touch tacos. It doesn't matter what you name it. And then inside the interrupt, all I've done is I've taken that touch detected variable that we set up here and I set it equal to true. So when the interrupt is fired, this function will run and it will set touch detected to true. And then what we'll do down in the loop, as you'll see here in the moment, is we'll check what the state of touch detected is. And if we see that it's set true, we'll print something off to the serial monitor. And if it's not true, we won't do anything. Okay. So you could do something totally different with your interrupt service routine. You don't wanna do big long things in interrupt service routines because these are supposed to be quick and snappy. I won't dive into all the kind of details there, but anyhow. Okay, so then in setup, we're actually using the function that will attach a touch pin as an interrupt and it is named appropriately touch attach interrupt. And it takes three arguments. The first one is which pin you want to trigger the interrupt. In our case, it's gonna be the touch pin, so A2, right? The next one it needs to know is the name of the function that is gonna be your callback function. So that was touch tacos. So touch tacos 
is the function that's going to get executed. But when does it get executed? Well, that's the third argument that we pass to touch, attach, interrupt. And in this case, we're passing in threshold. And threshold, we set to 2,500. Now, this is the kind of weird part about this touch, attach, interrupt function that you got to think about. Okay, if you were using an ESP32, like a Vroom module or something like that, not an ESP32 S2 or S3, then the way this threshold argument works is that whatever value you put in here, if that touch pin, you know, it's checking the capacitance, if it falls below that threshold value, then it will trigger that interrupt service routine. So let's say we set our threshold to 50. When we start the program, the capacitance is up at 100, but then the capacitance changes and it drops to, I don't know, 10, then our interrupt service routine is going to trigger. If the capacitance then comes back up above that threshold, nothing's going to happen because it only triggers when it goes above to below that threshold. Now, what I just explained there again is for the ESP32, but what's tricky, at least in my opinion, is that for an ESP32 S2 and S3, this threshold value is actually an increment value, okay? And what that means is that this ISR will trigger when the touchpad rises by a certain increment. In our case, we said 2,500. So what has to happen here? How does this work? So what that means is that pin needs to detect a capacitance change as big as the threshold that you set. So in this case, we set 25,000 as that increment. So that capacitance needs to change by 25,000 in order for that interrupt service routine. And just to be clear, it has to rise. So it's got to go from a lower value to a value above that threshold. It can't go from a, a high value below that increment value. It's only on the rise that this will trigger. Okay, I don't know, it seemed a little bit tricky to me because initially I had thought it was a threshold that you just had to surpass. And then I happened to have my mouse over top of the function until this little tooltip popped up that talked about how it's different for an ESP32 S2 and S3 and that that argument's given by a rise above a given increment. All right, so enough about that. The next thing we do in setup is we start serial communication and then down in the loop, I've just got an if statement. And all the if statement is checking for is whether or not touch detected is true or false. If it's true, if it's true, then we set it back to false. So we're resetting that flag. And then we print something to the serial monitor. In this case, we're just printing my taco. Now, if you'll recall, touch detected up at the very top, we set it as false, right? Global variable, we set it as false. But then inside our callback function, we set it equal to true. So the only time my taco should print is when this interrupt service routine function gets triggered. Okay, so I've uploaded this code to my ESP32. Let's go ahead and check this out. All right, so I'll open up the serial monitor window and I'm gonna go ahead and just touch the very end. All right, so I'm touching the very end, nothing's happening. What if I, oh, there we go. So now I touched it more and I got my taco to show up, right? But if I touch the very end, it's not enough. If you recall before, it wasn't enough of a change, but if I do that, then it's enough. So that's pretty cool. All right, well, let's change this to 80,000. Okay, so now it's set at 80,000. Let me go ahead. That shouldn't do it, nope. All right, see, now I'm touching it like this. Still not doing it, right? But what if I do, oh man, geez, all right. Oh, there we go, we got it to go. All right, so you really gotta, So you can see it's a lot less sensitive when we increase that increment value. So if you think this interrupt stuff is really cool and you're interested in learning more about how to code with Arduino and that type of stuff, I'd highly recommend you check out the training program we have at programmingelectronics.com. It's a training that we put together. I'm pretty darn proud of it. It basically is gonna walk you through learning how to program Arduino from knowing absolutely nothing about it. The goal here is that you can build some confidence when you're programming so you can go out and build your own kind of stuff. The next video you're gonna to wanna to watch is that ESP32 touch button video I've been talking about and I've even put it right here. So all you have to do is click right here. You can watch that video. It's gonna talk about a bunch more stuff dealing with these capacitive touch buttons right here.